Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Mount Kimby. Now, as usual, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description for just $5 on my Bandcamp. So check that out, and yeah, let's dive in. So, I have the thing here in front of me that you heard in the intro, and I'm just going to be going layer by layer and breaking it down and showing you what's going on. So the first layer is this. It's this pretty simple chord synth that I made, um, and then I'm playing these chords with it, which are just really simple major and minor triads, um, save for one of them, which is the second chord, which is not just like a major or minor triad, it's a little bit more complicated, but basically the way I made this chord was I just made, took the first one and then duplicated it and put the root down a semitone, um, and yeah, so these are pretty simple chords. They just kind of play this like very Mount Kimby-esque progression. Um, so the best advice I can give you for that is just try like listening to their music and try and get that same kind of like moody vibe um, that they have with like a lot of their chords. And don't be afraid to try like more interesting kind of kind of voices as well because they do use a lot of more interesting voices in their chords. But yeah. Um. So as far as the synth sound goes for this, pretty simple. It's just a sine wave and this white noise. Going to a low pass filter here, and then I have a little bit of vibrato on it. And yeah, the filter is mostly for the white noise because obviously it's not probably doing a whole lot on the sine wave, but you can hear it gives the white noise like this nice kind of like analog characteristic to it. So I wanted to have that on there. Um, and then after that, I just have this EQ8 and then this quick auto pan that I made to do like a fake side chain effect. Um, really quick, if you don't know with auto pan. Basically, what it's doing when you have it on, like, the auto-panning mode is it's just turning the volumes of the left and right ear up and down. So, if you turn this phase knob down, now it's affecting the mono signal. So, if you want to use this as, like, a fake kind of sidechain effect, all you have to do is just uh, turn on the BPM syncing, set it to quarter notes, so it's, like, kind of a, you know, quarter note sidechain effect. And then you gotta click on this little saw wave here, and then on the norm if you click on the normal switch, it'll invert it. And there you go, it gives you like a cool fake sidechain effect. Um, so the next layer is this one. We're just playing the same chords as that last synth. Um, it's just kind of there to sort of beef things up and give it a little bit more depth. Um, but yeah, this is pretty simple as well. It's just a sine wave, a little bit of white noise. And then a saw wave going into a low pass filter with a little bit of resonance. And then that's pretty much it. Um, I do have an EQ8 on there and then that same fake sidechain auto pan. But yeah, this is just a nice layer to sort of beef up the chords a little bit. And it, I think it's kind of like a thing with these two chord layers where it's like one, you can't have one without the other and vice versa. Um, so yeah, so the next layer here is this bass which sounds like this. And this is pretty simple. It's just playing these notes that follow the chord progression. Um, one thing I will say about Mountain Kimmy bass lines is they tend to do more of stuff like this rather than just like having, you know, a bass that plays like one note throughout the whole thing or that just plays the root note of the chords. So it's important to write kind of interesting bass lines like this because I think it's a big part of their sound. It gives it like this kind of like sparse open feeling where it's not as like, like it's not such like a wall of sound. It's more of just like a lot of instruments playing together nicely, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, and then this is a pretty simple synth. All I did is it's just a square wave going to this low pass filter with a little bit of an envelope to give it a kind of plucky sound. And then I have the fake side chain again with auto pan. Um, so the next thing I will show you is this. Which is a synth sound that I made by bouncing down a lot of versions of the same synth, basically. Um, and this is a pretty important thing for Mount Kimby style. They do a lot of this where, like, where they like make synth sounds and chop them up or chop up like old samples or whatever. But this is something very important, and I'm gonna be showing you kind of how you would make something like this. So the first step was this. Basically, I used this analog patch, which is just two s a saw wave and a square wave. Excuse me, not two saw waves, um, but a saw wave and a square wave. Going to the slow pass filter with a little bit of an envelope to kind of give it that, you know, opening effect. Um, and then there's a little bit of vibrato on there, and I have that going into an echo. 
So what I did with that was I bounced it down and made this. So basically what I did was I took that and I, like I said I bounced it down and then what I did was I made it half speed by pitching it down an octave and then unwarping it so it would be like like that makes it basically half speed because it's an octave down. Um, and then what I did with that was I chopped it up and I just kind of like reversed some of the parts and pitched some of the parts as well. And you know I just kind of played with it. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can probably figure out like sort of how I did this. Um, and then what I did was I put some effects on it. So I have this EQ8 cutting out all the low end. And then that's going into this OTT here to just sort of give it like a boost and give it that like nice kind of digital more like burnt out sound, you know? Um, and then I had that going into an erosion, which as you can hear is just giving it a nice bit crash. So after I had that, I took it and I bounced it down and made this. Which is basically just that loop, but pitched up an octave and twice as fast. Um, so yeah, you can hear that. And then what I did was, I have it going into this buffer shuffler. So if you don't know what the buffer shuffler is, it's something that comes from Max for Live. You should have it if you have Ableton 10, actually. Um, it's under the Max Audio Effects. There you go. And it just basically kind of like chops your stuff up. Like, it, it sort of splits it into these steps. And you can hear it's just kind of like chopping it up. And you can like move these around and do a lot. You can do a lot of stuff with it. You can like pitch your sample. There's a lot of stuff that can be done. But I just kind of played around with the rearranging part. Um, and then once I had that, I bounced it down and made this. So basically the same thing, but you can hear I chopped it up a lot more rhythmically. Um, this fits the beat a lot more. So yeah, pretty simple there. I mean, it sounds complex, and it sounds like something like I think if you heard this in a track, you'd be like, oh, how, how exactly would you go about making that? But really, it's just a matter of kind of chopping up the synth and trying to get a little bit creative with it. Um, but this is something that's very important for Mount Kimby's style. Like, this is a huge cornerstone of what they do. It's chopping up synths, you know, making all these weird synth textures and sounds and all that. So it's really important to do stuff like this, and yeah, that is how I would go about doing it. Um, so the next thing here are these drums, which sound like this. They're pretty simple. Um, basically, it starts with this rim shot, which sounds like this. Um, and all this is is just a basic rim shot sample. I just low pass it because if you listen, there's kind of like, it almost sounds like there's like a hi-hat or a shaker sample on top of that in the high end if you listen very closely. So I just ha low pass it. And I have passed it a bit as well, just to get rid of all whatever low end would be in there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty simple. Just a nice, powerful rim shot. I also did move this back a little bit. So you can see, this is the exact beat that it's supposed to hit on. And I have it hitting here. Um, that just gives it a little bit more groove when it hits like a little bit early like that. I'm sure you've probably heard of this before, but it's a very popular thing to do in music like this. And yeah, it just gives it a nice sound. Um, so the next thing is this kick, which sounds like this. And you can see, no processing on that, pretty clean. Um, it's just more about finding a good sample. Um, like something like this, where it's a nice, beefy, powerful kick. But it's not too bassy, and it's not like too long. It's, it's just not going to take over the mix, but it, it'll give you a nice, like punchy kick that just kind of sort of kicks through. Um, and yeah, and then the next thing here is this hi-hat, which is pretty simple as well. Um, yeah, it's just this basic hi-hat sample. Now, with this one, I do actually have something going on. I have this velocity on here, um, and what, I, what I'm doing is I basically have it, like, playing random notes within this range, so from, like, 33, I guess, to 127 in terms of MIDI values. Um, and basically what that's doing is it's just giving it a little bit of random velocity and, like, humanizing it a little bit because that's something about Mount Kimmy's music. It's very human. Like, it's electronic, of course, but it's very, very, like, like I said, just, like, it has kind of, like, a human feel to it. Um, it's very analog, and, yeah, so doing stuff like this really helps to sort of bring that, bring that to life, I guess. Um, yeah, I just think it sounds cool with that random velocity on there. Um, and then really nothing too much else. This is a pretty simple hi-hat sample. I do have the track delay on there, though. Um, and if you don't know what track delay is, you turn it on by pressing this little D icon down here, and then this comes up. 
And what it does, it basically just moves the contents of your track over to the right. It's literally the same as if I want like this, like however many milliseconds. Um, the only difference is that it's a little bit easier because you can just turn this little thing, this little dial here, and it, you know, it still stays on the grid, so it's easy to move around. And it's just easier to work with. Um, and what this does is it just kind of gives it more of like an interesting sort of groove, as well as, I mean, it gives it really a groove in general, I guess. Like, this is a pretty simple drum pattern. So by adding that little, that little bit of track delay, like I said, it just gives it a little bit more of a groove. Um, so then the last things here are just these two noise layers. I have this one. And then this one which is kind of like a vinyl crackle. And yeah, so these are pretty simple. I mean, these are just like nice sort of layers to add. Um, and definitely a very important amount of Kimmy's music is having these like different background noise layers going on. Um, so I just have these and they add a lot of texture, you know, like if I just play this without them, it's a little bit too synthy, but adding these, You can hear just giving a lot of nice background texture and a lot of feel that you wouldn't be able to get with these synths. Um, so yeah, that's really mostly it. Like I said, main things to think about here are like using the kind of nice warm chord sounds and then chopping up the synth to make things that you couldn't make with just like a basic synth or by programming MIDI. Um, and then the drums kind of like trying to humanize them with things like what I did on that hi hat. Um, so that's gonna be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video. Um. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Maybe even share the video if it really helped you out. Once again, you get the sample pack and project file from this video in the description on my band camps. So make sure to check that out as well. And I will see you guys again tomorrow with another tutorial.